Hi there, my name is Jeff Sackman. I run a website called gmathacks.com and I've written several GMAT textbooks including Total GMAT Math, which is a comprehensive overview of the content on the GMAT Math section. What I want to talk to you about today is a fairly specific, narrow topic within the topic of overlapping sets. Normally, when there's an overlapping sets question, you have two sets. You might have, as I discussed in a previous video, math majors, science majors, and the people who are double majors in both math and science. But some more difficult questions take that one step further. And instead of just having two sets, math and science majors, they have three sets. So there might be math majors, science majors, English majors, people who are double majoring in math and science, people who are double majoring in science and English, maybe somebody who's triple majoring in math, science, and English. At that point, there are a lot more variables. It gets a lot more complicated, and that's what I want to walk you through today. So the first thing you'll notice is that there's, there's a lot more variables, a lot more parameters required to make a question like this work. So I've written out the parameters for a sample question. Let's say you're meeting up with some travelers and 22 of the people in the room have been to France, 15 have been to Spain, and 11 have been to Portugal. Now, some people have been to more than one country, so we find out that nine people have been to both France and Spain, two people to Spain and Portugal, three people to France and Portugal, and there are four super travelers who have been to France, Spain, and Portugal. So given all that information, how many people are in the room? One thing I didn't mention here is that we're assuming that everybody in this group has been to France, Spain, or Portugal. If we have people in the room who don't travel, who have gone to other places, then we need to consider them as well. In this particular question, we're just assuming that there isn't anyone who hasn't been to at least one of France, Spain, and Portugal. So graphically, the way we can represent that is with a Venn diagram, only a more complicated Venn diagram than the ones you might have seen before. So we start with the typical Venn diagram with these two ovals on top, but we add a third one. Notice that when we draw this, every oval has an overlapping section with every other oval, and there's a section in the middle that's the intersection of all three sets. So overlap, 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 and then let's call that the super overlap right in the middle. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different sections of the Venn diagram to contend with. So let's map all this information onto the diagram. Let's call this upper left one France, which is 22, Spain is 15, Portugal is 11. We know France and Spain is 9, so France and Spain, the overlap is here. Spain and Portugal that's two. France and Portugal is three. And the super overlap, all three in the middle, is four. So, let's work this out. Down at the bottom here we have Portugal. Everything in this circle together is 11. Three plus four plus two is nine. So we've already accounted for nine of the people who've been to Portugal because they've also been somewhere else. So they're in one of these segments down here. That leaves only two people who have been to Portugal but not to Spain or France. Doing the same thing up here, we have 3 plus 4 plus 9, that's 16 people in the overlaps for France. That leaves 6 more who have only been to France. Then over here, Spain, 15, the overlaps get us to 15. So actually, nobody has just been to, France, to Spain. rather. Anyone who's been to Spain shows up in the overlaps. They've also been to France or to Portugal. As I mentioned before, there's no none term. There's, there's no people who haven't been to one of these three countries. But if we wanted to, we could tack this on over here. So in this case, there are no people who haven't been to any of the countries. So now, we're going to take every single one of those numbers, add them up. So we get 6 plus 9 is 15, plus 0, 15, plus 3 is 18, 22, 24, and... 26. So we have a total of 26 travelers in the room. Looking at these numbers, it looked like it was a whole lot more, but 22 is what it, or 26 rather is what it works out to. Now, I don't like this method. It's a good way of visually representing what's going on, and at the very least you should understand how it works so that in a pinch you could use it, 
or you'll recognize it when you see a Venn diagram. But in practice, I would never use the Venn diagram when under the time pressure of two or three minutes per question on the GMAT math section. What I would use instead is a formula that's just an expansion of the formula given for two overlapping sets. So here's the formula on the bottom here. The total number of people is the number in group one plus group two plus group three, so that's France, Spain, and Portugal, minus all of the two set overlaps. So this right here actually contains a lot of stuff. All the twos are the people who are in one and two, one and three, two and three, so that includes these three right here, nine, two, and three, minus two times the people who have been to all three. That's the trickiest one, and that's what makes this type of problem particularly hard. So anyone who's in this section, the four people who have been to France, Spain, and Portugal, they've been counted three times. If we count these 22, 15, and 11, anyone who's been in all three, they, they're represented once in the France total, once in the Spain total, and once in the Portugal total. Now just because you've been to three countries doesn't mean you count as three people. You still only count as one. So these four people have been triple counted. So we need to subtra subtract them from the total twice. And then, optionally, we can add in the people who ha haven't been to any country. So quickly, let's work through that given these parameters. So the total is group one plus group two plus group three, 22 plus 15 plus 11, minus the twos, that's nine plus two plus three is 14, minus 14, minus, two times the threes, which is four. There's no nuns, so we can add in the zero right there. And theoretically, that should work out to 26. Let's check it out. 22 plus 15 is 37, plus is 11 is 48. Subtract the eight right here, that gets us down to 40. Subtract the 14, that gets us to 26. And there we have it. So. If you're familiar with the Venn diagram, you understand how these pieces fit together, you understand the fundamental concepts, you don't need to draw it all out for yourself. You can go straight to the formula. And as we just saw, the formula can happen in 30, 45 seconds if you know what you're doing. When you're drawing all this out, there's a lot more steps, there's a lot more um, pratfalls that can happen, just confusing whether this six refers to the whole oval or just this segment of the oval. Those dangers are the reason why I personally do not prefer using the Venn diagram. But as I mentioned before, practice with the Venn diagram, make sure you understand how it works, and eventually get comfortable enough that you can use the formula and plow through these problems a lot faster. So that is how to approach a question with three overlapping sets. You're now ready for one of the more difficult question types on the GMAT math section.